Tile maps are a great Unity feature, which will help you speed up your 2D level design and world creation process. In a grid overlay, you can easily draw with different brush tools the tiles you want. When you start right with a new 2D project from the Unity Hub, the tile map package is already installed. But you can always install it via the Package Manager under Window, Package Manager and select Unity Registry. Here look for 2D Tile Map Editor. In your hierarchy, right click and create a new 2D Tile Map Rectangular Tile Map. Two things have been created, a grid and the actual tile map. You can create several tile maps inside of one grid. The grid is basically the size of all your tile maps, which can be changed. You can also change the cell gap, where cells can overlap or have a border in between. And there also exist other forms of tile maps, like isometric ones. The tile map itself consists of two components, a tile map and a tile map renderer. But for now, let's ignore all these settings here and fill our tile map. In order to draw something, you need a so-called tile palette. Go to Window, 2D and click the tile palette. Since the new versions of Unity, you also have a button in your scene view when a tile map is selected. A new window opens and you can attach it somewhere. Create a new palette, give it a name and save it in a new folder called Palettes. At the top here, you can switch between the tile map you want to draw on. Always take a look up here before drawing when you are using several tile maps. In this palette we can now drag our tile sprites, but we don't have any yet. I downloaded this outdoor tile package. It's free and you can find the link in the description. For pixel art to be crisp, I changed the filter mode to point, no filter, and disable the compression. In this case, the pixel art is based on a 16x16 16 16 grid, so I changed the pixels per unit to 16. This will make such a 16x16 16 16 tile exactly fill one tile in our tile map, which is a 1x1 one one grid. The sheet contains multiple tiles, so I set this as sprite mode. Hit apply and open the sprite editor. At the top, go to slice, select grid by cell size and enter 16x16 16 16, and hit slice. If slice is grayed out, make sure to set the sprite mode to multiple, like I did before opening the sprite editor. Click apply to save your changes and now we have all those single sprites. You can now drag and drop the ones you want to your palette or the whole sprite sheet. The second method will preserve the current order. When dropping, you will be asked where to save those tiles. I create a new folder called Tiles. You can always edit your palette by clicking the Edit button here. So you can remove tiles by selecting the eraser tool from the toolbar here. Or you can move a tile by selecting the Select tool or pressing S, click a tile and when it's highlighted press M or select the Move tool and drag and drop your tile. In this case we don't need to order our tiles because they are already nicely ordered. Hit the Edit button again to leave the Edit mode. This will save your changes. So now let's draw. Select the Brush tool or press B. Select the tile and just draw in your scene. With the rectangle tool or the U key, you can fill rectangles. The flood tool will change all tiles of the same type that are adjacent to each other. And of course you can erase tiles. The shortcut is D. If you now want to draw on top, like a bush. You can see our ground tile below gets overwritten. So we need another tile map. Create a new one in the same grid in your hierarchy, like we did before, and select this new one as active tile map in your palette. Now we can draw on top of the other map. With the rectangle tool you can also select and draw multiple tiles the way they are ordered in your palette. And if you are annoyed of drawing all those different border tiles one after another, check out my other video about auto-tiling. 
With easy to define rules, you can automatically draw those border tiles. If you have trouble seeing your top tile map, make sure to change the order and layer. I prefer setting the ground layer to a negative number and to have all layers on top, so those who are next to the player at the same level like the player. Now let's talk about colliders. Our ground map should not have any collider, because we want to walk there. But all things on top can have one, so select this tile map. You have two options to create a collider. You can add a component called Tile Map Collider 2D. This adds a collider to every one of your filled tiles, but if you have a lot of big shapes, especially with not reachable inner tiles, every one of these tiles will have its own collider. This can have impacts on your performance. Here you can see this lock has three separate colliders. Oh, and I drew this on the wrong layer. Well. The second method for colliders is to use a Composite Collider 2D. Just add this additionally to your tile map collider. Since it is physics based, it automatically adds a rigid body. Make sure to set its mode type to static or else your tile map will fall down like this. Now in your tile map collider check the used by composite and everything works. The composite collider creates colliders only for whole shapes, not for single tiles. The lock has now only one collider. This makes this approach better for your performance, especially on large tile maps. If you now want a player to move in your tile map, Check out my video about movement using Unity's new input system. What I explained there is exactly what you can use on a map like this. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the content, consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time.